Hey guys, Carl here, Cultivate with Carl, and it is hot. Oh my God, it's hot. In South Mississippi Zone INA, two blocks off the beach, and we are dealing with some stifling heat. Uh, the heat started probably last week or so. Uh, I guess there's a big high pressure over the center of their country, and a lot of people are getting storms. Uh, we're getting our afternoon thunder showers and tornadoes. And uh, upstate, I guess they're getting a lot more severe storms with hail and things like that. So uh, traditionally, we're a little early for this kind of stuff, uh, but it's a La Nina year, I believe. And if it is a La Nina year, that means less tropical storms for us. And that's what we hope, knock on wood, or hardy plank, um, maybe a little aluminum. And, uh, but for the garden, what that means is uh, all good things come to an end. The uh, spring garden has sprung, and let me tell you, hang on, I'm going to reach in the camera here. <laughs> this is a harvest from today. I am tomatoed out. I mean, I've been giving tomatoes away to my neighbors, to my coworkers, hobos, you know, just about everybody. And um, I've had uh, great success. Um, great success. This year... Um, this, I believe, uh, was a celebrity tomato. Um, I believe it was, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was a celebrity tomato. And uh, this is small for the average size that I've gotten off of both my celebrities and my, um, uh, God, what was the big ones? The, um, the Bush Goliath. The Bush Goliath, for sure, this year was the winner, winner, chicken dinner um, as far as uh, producers. And uh, we'll talk about that when we get over to the tomato bed, uh, about the difference between the two plants and the other plants and how they were producing bigger, better tomatoes. Uh, I'm at a turning point right now with the garden, and I believe what I'm going to do and what I am doing today is I'm pulling my tomato plants. Uh, I have not suffered from the blight, early blight, late blight. Uh, I have not suffered... Um, from any of the aphid issue that I've had in the past. So actually I am taking my tomatoes and I'm uh, plants, I'm throwing them in the compost. Uh, I have had a small issue with the little blossom and rot. And I believe it's because of the consistency of watering, not as much the soil nutrients because in my soil, I was adding uh, calcium and nutrients. But even if you have calcium in your soil, uh, if you're not consistently watering, uh, you will have end up with blossom and rot because in more likely than not if you have blossom and rot it's because uh, you're not watering consistently so um, this year has been kind of a crapshoot uh, man let me tell you it's just been kind of crazy but what was a success tomatoes resounding success uh, more tomatoes I love actually the fun part of growing so many tomatoes is giving them away and watching people's face light up <laughs> um, the potatoes smashed it out of the park i've got potatoes to probably last me into the fall which will give me seed potatoes to grow for the winter uh i've had some mild success with cucumbers i've had mild success with um my squash and zucchini but the vine borers got right here so as it worked out i've got a good friend uh his name's george uh he lives up in uh the next county up and he put a garden in for the first time this year and lo and behold he had a bumper crop of squash. So going back to the old ways, George and I were able to barter. I was giving him tomatoes. He was giving me squash. And it was a match made in heaven. Perfect, beautiful thing to do because now I have a refrigerator full of uh, squash. And he's got a tummy full of potatoes. Or tomatoes. Well, I gave him potatoes too. So um, that's the way it's supposed to be, man. Get along with your friends and neighbors and help each other out. So... Without further ado, let's take a walk around. And uh, the garden is a little bit trashed. Uh, the grass is high. I came out to cut the grass this morning. As soon as I got the mower out, well, a thunderstorm popped and wet everything. And so either I'm, it's, uh, I'm gonna have to wait till this afternoon or first thing tomorrow morning because the heat index for the last three days has been like 100, 107 two days ago. So uh, you, it's hard to be out in that kind of uh, weather uh, do a manual labor without risking injury. So, uh, I'm not a spring chicken anymore. So, um, you know, I'd rather sit in AC and, uh, work on my other hobbies anyway. So, <laughs> uh, okay. So let me see. We talked about tomatoes, potatoes. Uh, yep. The reason why I'm ending the tomatoes, let me just say this as the summer warms up, 
and the nights get warmer the tomato production will slow down and your tomatoes will get smaller and and that's just because of the heat unless you're using a hybrid that's designed to work in the heat which i do have a few of those um so i'm just calling it quits on the tomatoes they've done me well and we're going to push on and do something else um and we'll talk about that when we go look at the beds so Let's go do a tour of the beds real quick. We're just going to, this is going to be a quick hitter. We're going to fly by the beds. I got a lot of work to do before it gets too hot. So let's go see the beds. Okay, here are the cherry tomatoes, uh, minus a few branches. I've already trimmed a few out. But you can see, like, I picked this morning, and there's still a ton of them on there. It's just that the ones that are on there are just, like, really small. So uh, I probably will uh, save them, or maybe not. I don't think I will. Um, here we have the determinants. This was the determinate bed, and um, a couple of them made it, and a couple of them didn't. So that is a celebrity tomato right there, and it was here in the corner. Now, this tomato, the celebrity, and that bush goliath, they were planted weeks ahead of everybody else because they were bought at the store, and they were already about six inches high. So um, when it came to production their tomatoes were huge because they were produced in a cooler climate. This celebrity I grew from a seedling and I put it out here and that's about as big as it's gonna get. That's the average size of the tomatoes off of the ones that I grew. And as you can see, we've got several, but like, uh, get the cord out of the way there. But some of these are having uh, in rot problems, you know, and like I said, it's, got, it's all to do with watering. Um, we've got some die off here, uh, and that's okay. You know, like I said, here's a little bit more blossom in rot for you. Um, and it's all watering issues. Now, we talked about it before. I'm staying with the fact that these are indeterminates. These things are supposed to be six foot tall right now, and they're not. Uh, no blossom in rot problems. Uh, these are lemon boys. Um, but no blossom and problems, just no vigorous growth. And that to me says soil problem. And I'm going to get a soil test done on this bed, but I am pulling these today. I'm, I'm not going to stick it out with them. Uh, my little Cherokee purples, they gave me three uh, teeny tiny um, tomatoes. So I was very unsatisfied with those, but it's more my fault. So there you go. <clears throat> okay, guys, here you go. Uh, this is a sweet potato bed. The uh, sweet potatoes are moving right along. I still haven't got them off the air conditioner over there yet, but I'm going to have to. Uh, plus, I'm transitioning this area where the cardboard is into uh, two more beds. I'm going to top them with a bed liner, a, uh, a wood bed that I'm making. I got the cardboard down there for weed suppression, so I'm going to have to get in here and pluck out all these weeds. Let's spin around and see what we got going on. Um, these... Uh, these are um, eggplant. Two of those are going to get transferred into here. Uh, the onions are getting ready to get pulled because they are about done. Um, I have several jalapenos that are being harvested. You can probably see them laying there in the pot. And believe it or not, finally, I got some green peppers growing. Uh, it makes me very excited. These onions are going to get harvested. Uh, this tomato right here was a, I believe it's a Creole... Yeah, um, and so these tomatoes are doing pretty good, but that's one of the heat resistant types. These flowers are about done. The squash that was there is done. These flowers are done. Rosemary's doing fine. Uh, here's more uh, Creole tomatoes, and it looks like those um, gypsy peppers are turned in and ready to go. All this is going to be torn out. Uh, it's all weeds. And what I'm going to actually do is move all the peppers. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the pepper plants and consolidate them down this row. And so this row will be the only row growing along the fence. Uh, don't mind me while I spin you around here. Um, this row is all going to be moved or pulled. Now, I do uh, have uh, jalapenos here and there. Those are going to be okay. The tomato plant will probably stay in place until they're done. Uh, one or two of these tomato plants were having a problem with blossom and rot. Like that tomato plant, wilty, uh, that one's going. Um, this one, probably staying, staying, staying. And so they'll stay till they're done. Now, if you look right here, then my red onions are about done. 
so uh, they're getting ready to come out. That one, the plant was flopped over, uh, so I went ahead and pulled it. I'm going to dry that out and use it. I'm going to leave the other ones in there a couple more weeks. But all that stuff down there is getting ready to come out. And there's Squirrel Patrol looking hot. It is hot out here, y'all. Hot, hot, hot. All right, as far as the beds, this is what we're going to do. We're going to clean the beds up. Um, some of them we're going to replant. Some of them we're not. Uh, for sure, I may replant some stream beans. Those stream beans have run their course. I may replant some of them because they'll do well in the heat. And then uh, I'm going to pull everything else. Uh, the watermelon plant looks like it might be doing okay. Got a train coming. But as far as all the tomato plants are getting pulled. So next time we have a video, you'll see I probably have new plants in here. I believe in this bed, I'm going to do corn. And in this bed, I'm going to do okra. So we'll see how that goes. Let's go on back on the porch, get into the shade. Okay, guys, there you have it. Another garden tour knocked out. Uh, more garden progress being made, more uh, produce being harvested, and it's time to change gears. We're moving from the spring garden to the summer garden. So, you know, by the next video, we're going to have a good summer garden update on how we're making that change. Uh, right now, I've got to clean up the mess from the spring. And believe it or not, you actually have to be thinking ahead to your fall garden. Being blessed to be here in Zone 9A, we have the ability to grow almost all year round. So I'm going to, uh, I believe what I'm going to do is pull back, do some soil maintenance over the summer, and then roll into the fall with a much, much bigger production. I, I think if I can get a bed of corn in and then get another bed of uh, some string beans in, maybe some okra, and that'll be it. And then the rest of the beds will just undergo soil testing and, uh, you know, adding some compost, adding some nutrients getting ready for the fall and uh, I got to work on the irrigation system a little bit and uh, get that perfected. So, you know, it'll be a thin grow summer, but it'll still be a busy summer nonetheless. Uh, I hope you learned some stuff today about the tomatoes and stuff. And, uh, you know, it's Father's Day. So I hope all of you out there uh, are fathers who are fathers. Maybe your, um, you know, kids grown up, moved out of the house. Hopefully they'll give you a call today. If they don't, that's okay. They couldn't get where they're at today without you anyway. So, um, you know, just do a good job where you can. Uh, take your kids out to the garden if they're young. Teach them how to grow something. And uh, teach them to be self-sufficient. In this time and day and age, man, you know we need that. So, uh, but that's it. That's all I've got. You know, get a hobby. Always have a hobby. That's what we say here on the channel. And make sure that you're uh, doing something fun. Always have a good time. Uh, and uh, that'll be it. This is Carl here from Cultivate with Carl. I'm signing off and I'm sweating because it's a hot day in South Mississippi. We'll see y'all later.